let us look at another tool that false teachers uses in order to bring about deception in the church and to draw people into their false teaching. And that is signs and wonders and feelings in general. Many false prophets will try to show us that they're authentic by showing signs and wonders and pointing to the fact that their teaching brings about good feelings and it, it just feels good and it feels right. They will show these signs and wonders, healings and, and different things. And they will also point to the fact that when they speak and, and when these signs and wonders happen, that there's, there's this general good feeling of peace and love and, and happiness that comes upon it, which they say is proof that the Spirit of God is working. This is one of the things that the, the Mormon church has. They, they call it the burning in the bosom. The Mormon preachers will, will point to that as proof that the Holy Spirit and that God is speaking through them. And many in the Mormon church will say, yes, I, I feel that burning in my bosom. And they feel that that is proof that what is being told and what is being taught to them is, is true. And, and this is a great deception. The Bible never tells us that if we see signs and wonders, we can be absolutely sure that what is being said to us is truth. Actually, it tells us the complete opposite, that when there is signs and wonders, test the spirits and make sure that what is being taught is true. And it also says that that is exactly how Satan will come, is with signs and wonders that will deceive. The larger churches in the West also point to the signs and wonders that they have in their churches as proof that God is doing great works among them. And it's just ridiculous signs like gold teeth way back in the 90s, I think it is, in Toronto Blessing. and They have visions and, and visitations of angels and healings and they, they go into trances and they're slain in the spirit and they, they have these laughing spells and they start to speak in tongues. And all these signs and wonders are pointed to, and they, they say these are proof that our church is blessed by God and that God is working. And these are not at all proof that God is working. It is very easy for Satan to use these signs and wonders in order to deceive people and bring them into a false church. Being slain in the Spirit is an extremely common one that, that we've seen many times in Nepal. P people come in over and they try to do these revivals in the churches and these revivals have no teaching in them it's not a change of heart they're not teaching people to repent they're not teaching people about christ they're just going over and asking who wants to be healed and they're knocking them over they're slaying them in the spirit and the truth is you go back to these places and the people have not changed at all they they're still jumping the fence between their hindu uh, practices and going to church there is no revival there. When you look in the Bible, you do not find an example of this slain in the spirit where people are, are falling down backwards. And any time that someone does fall backward, it is a sign of condemnation. It happens twice, actually. It happens once when the prophet Eli falls back off his chair and he dies because he just heard that the Philistines had taken the ark and that his sons had died. And it happens when the soldiers come to arrest Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he says, I am he, and all everyone falls backwards. That is certainly not a sign of blessing. Uh, listen to 1 Samuel 4.18. When he mentioned the ark of God, Eli fell backwards off his chair by the side of the gate. His neck was broken and he died, for he was an old man and he was heavy. He had led Israel forty years. And then John 18, 6, it says, When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. And therefore, we must judge these signs. We must think about them. We must be critical of these things. It is not bad to be critical of these things. It is not bad to be careful. So there are three things I want to say about signs and wonders and how these churches use feelings to draw people into their churches and into false doctrine. The first thing I want to say is that these signs are very easily produced by Satan. No problem whatsoever there. Second thing I want to say is that we are commanded to test and to think about where these signs are coming from. It is a command. It is not a choice. And it is definitely not wrong to test 
But the Bible clearly tells us that the reason we need to test these things is because there will be false signs and wonders. And there will be false spirits out there that will give you peace and happiness, but they're not from God. The last thing that I would like to say in this video about signs and wonders and feelings is that our churches should not focus on them. These signs and wonders can happen in our churches, but these signs and wonders should not be sought out by the church. We are to seek to do the work of God, and He will bring about these signs and wonders if He chooses to. Many Christians are going to these conferences, going from one conference to the next, seeking these signs and seeking this high feeling, and they're seeking these prophecies, and they don't seek to know more about God. They don't seek to learn more and to do more for God. It changes everything. We're no longer preaching righteousness. We're no longer preaching repentance. We're going around trying to give people good feelings and knocking them over and healing them. And this is not what the Bible teaches us to do. Luke eleven twenty nine. As the crowd increased, Jesus said, This is a wicked generation. It asks for a sign, but none will be given except the sign of Jonah. It is wicked people that seek signs. To have signs in their church is not a wicked thing. God wants to give signs. He, he has given people the gift of healing. And there, there is signs that happen in the churches. However, we are not to seek these things. In Acts 4, 29-30, we find the church praying and a sign happens that the whole, whole building starts to shake. And we know that there was a lot of healings at that time. But in these verses, we can understand the focus of the church. The focus of the church was not to look for these signs. And they were not calling out for God to shake the building and to bring about these feelings and to come and, and bring about signs and wonders. What they were asking is for strength and courage to speak out and to speak the name of Jesus despite the fact that they were being arrested and beaten for it. And they did ask that God would heal in order to demonstrate that the gospel they were preaching was true. So healings are a sign, but they must come along with the true gospel of Christ. And the healings themselves were not sought out. The church was seeking to preach the word of God. Listen to the heart of the church in Acts 4, 29-30. Now, Lord, consider the threats and enable your servants to speak your words with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. The focus here is speaking the word of God. Their focus is not to bring about the healing. The focus is to bring the message of repentance out amongst people so that they will become Christians. And they ran the risk of being beaten and killed. Let us not make the mistake to make the signs and wonders the focus. What we must ask ourselves is what teaching does the signs and wonders point to? Is the teaching right or not? Don't look at the signs and wonders and say, look, that's proof that God is working. That is not at all proof that God is working. Satan may be working. What is proof that God is working is the teaching behind those signs and wonders. A lot of these churches that are pointing to the signs and wonders among them to show that God is working, teach that prophets can make mistakes, that prophecy is for everyone, first of all, that every single Christian can prophesy, and that prophets can m make mistakes, so that if you are a prophet, if you happen to say something wrong, don't worry about it. Let me explain their understanding here. They understand that every single Christian can be a prophet and should prophesy. And they also understand that you can learn to prophesy. So it's not a gift given to you. It's something that you learn. And therefore, if it is something that you learn, you can make mistakes. And, and you need to grow into this gift of prophecy. And this is extremely wrong because then you're calling what is evil, false prophecy, and lies. You're calling it good. You're calling it, hey, no problem. Have no fear there. You can't be deceived by lies. It's just no worries. Just grow in this gift. And you're also lying to people that do not have the gift of prophecy that they can prophesy. And that is a lie. And therefore, these people are trying with their own strength to prophesy when God has not given them the spirit of prophecy. So these people are running around looking for the gift that God has not given them. And who do you think is going to step in to give them this gift? 
it will be Satan. It will be Satan coming in and saying, do you, you want that power? Here, I'll give you that power. But God has not given that power to them. Prophecy has never changed. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, prophecy doesn't change. Prophecy is when someone hears directly from God the words that they are to speak. And so there cannot be any mistakes in these prophecies. And the Bible is extremely clear that not all are prophets. And that prophecy is a gift. And, and if you look at uh, 1 Corinthians 12, you see that to some wisdom is given, to some faith is given, to some speaking in tongues, to some prophecy, to some interpretation of tongues. And it goes through this list. It never says to everyone the gift of tongues, to everyone the gift of prophecy. And even Paul goes, goes further and says, can everyone speak in tongues? Can everybody prophesy? Of course not. His answer is, of course not, they can't, because we are not given the same gifts. So when you tell someone that they can prophesy, they are seeking, they're going to start to seek a gift that God has not given them, and therefore they are no longer seeking God's will, they are seeking their own desires, and they're seeking a power and a sign that God has not given them. This is a clear open door for Satan to come in and deceive this type of church. This type of church will ask you to be controlled by the Spirit and will teach you that whatever the Spirit does with you, you can't stop it. And therefore, there's all these out-of-control signs where they're laughing in the Spirit, where they're drunk in the Spirit, and they're not taught to think about these. You, you don't judge these things. You don't think about them. You don't look in the Scripture, whether they're true or not. It must be good if the Spirit comes and takes a hold of you. But the Bible tells you to test the spirits. Test what is happening to you. Think about it. The Bible tells you that the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. When Paul teaches about spiritual gifts, he says very clearly that the prophet has control over when to speak or not to speak. Those speaking in tongues can stop when others are speaking so that there's order in the church. So there is self-control in the use of the gifts. Listen to 1 Corinthians 14, 29-33. Two or three prophets should speak, and the others should weigh carefully what is said. Uh, so we are to weigh carefully what these prophets say. Why do we weigh carefully what they say? Because there are false prophets. We need, to, we need to determine what is right and wrong. Verse 30, And if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, the first speaker should stop. For you can all prophesy in turn, so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. The spirit of prophets are subject to the control of prophets. Did you hear that? Verse 32. The spirit of prophecy, the spirit of speaking in tongues that God gives us as a gift to those who do speak in tongues and those who do prophesy is subject to the control of the prophet. It's subject to the control of the one speaking so that he can speak in order, in turn, so that it is not a huge mess and there is self-control here. So this idea that the Spirit comes and all of a sudden you start shaking and all of a sudden you start speaking out and crying out and you, you get drunk and all this stuff, this is not the spirit of self-control. And this is quite obviously demonic spirits. Verse 33, For God is not a God of disorder but of peace, as in all the congregation of the Lord's people. 1 Corinthians 14.40 But everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. God is a God of order and He is a God of peace. How can we then say that His Spirit comes and brings about disorder? Signs and wonders are not a sign that God is at work necessarily. Signs and wonders need to be judged by the teaching that comes along with them. Many Christians are out there seeking an experience of the Holy Spirit. And this is what they're being taught in their Bible schools now. It's no longer the Word of God and what you are to do, but it's how to bring about these experiences with God, to bring about gold dust in the, the congregation and bring about laughter and how to prophesy, how to heal, how to take trips to heaven. Like seriously, this is what they're teaching how to have visions, how to, to go and, and talk with angels. People are seeking these signs and wonders. They're seeking these feelings, and they're not seeking to do the will of God. We are to seek the kingdom of God. We are to seek the character of God. 
2 Peter 1, 5-8, For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, to goodness knowledge, to knowledge self-control, self-control perseverance, perseverance godliness, to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measures, they will keep you from being in, ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, what brings about effectiveness and productiveness in a Christian life is your character of faith, of love, of goodness, of godliness, of perseverance, of mutual affection. It is not your gift of healing. It is not your gift of prophecy. It is not these signs and wonders, although they, those may come along as well. But they are not what makes us productive. They are not what makes us effective. We are to seek the character of God, not the signs and wonders that He can bring in His church. Hebrews 10.24 And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. We are to go to love people and to do good deeds. We are also to seek a renewal of our minds and a renewal of the way we think. Romans 12, 1-2 Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. What are we supposed to seek? We're supposed to give our bodies over to Christ and no longer live for ourselves and no longer conform to this world and to be transformed by the renewal of our minds, that is through the teaching and through the word of God. And then we will be able to test what God's will is. The church in the book of Acts, in Acts 2, 42 to 45, devoted themselves to teaching. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had a need. You see, they focused completely on teaching and on fellowship and on prayer. And God brought along with that signs and wonders. I think the church is deceived in thinking that when there is a peaceful feeling and a good feeling, that it has to be the Spirit of God. Satan can easily bring about a peaceful feeling in your life. I would encourage you to go to Joanna Michelson's testimony on YouTube. She had an amazing experience with this type of thing where she was actually healing people and, and she was performing surgery without anesthetic and without any tools by the power of God so she thought and she had peace doing this and she thought she was doing the work of God all along she was being possessed by a demonic spirit to do these things and she realized this later uh, when she went to Labrie through uh, Han I think uh, Francis Schaeffer and she, be she became a Christian and realized she was being deceived by a demon and she would actually sit down before she would do these these uh, operations. She would sit down and welcome Jesus in the room. And Jesus would come and basically possess her. And she would do these amazing miracles. Do not think that as soon as there's peace and, and, and there's this peaceful spirit, that it is proof that God is there. There's this false teaching that out there that says that if Satan and a demonic spirit comes, that automatically there will be fear and unrest and that there will no, no longer be peace anymore that is wrong satan is an angel of light he was one of the most powerful and beautiful beings created he can bring about peace if he likes he can really deceive people through the signs and wonders and the peace that he can bring through his spirit let's remember matthew 7 21 to 23 where Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Only those who do, do, who do God's will will enter into heaven. When you are seeking after signs and wonders, when you are seeking to prophesy when God has not given you the spirit of prophecy, when you are seeking to speak in tongues when God has not given you the gifts of tongues, when you are seeking to heal when God has not given you the, the, the gift of healing, 
when you are seeking power and, and prophecy and, and these kind of signs and wonders, when God does not want you to seek them, you are not doing His will. You are doing your own will and your own desire. And many will say to me on that day, it says here in verse 22, many people will say, Lord, Lord, I prophesied in your name. I drove out demons in your name. I performed miracles in your name. Many will come and think that they are Christians because they were prophesying in the name of Jesus. But Jesus will say, verse 23, Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoer. Do not think that when you see prophecies come true, when you see healings, and when you see miracles happen, that that automatically means that the Spirit of God is at work. Many people that do these things will not enter into heaven. Do not think that these signs and wonders are proof that God is working. The proof that God is working is in the teaching behind the signs and wonders. Not only can Satan produce signs, but he will produce signs. It's just promised to us, Matthew 24, 24, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Let's uh, look quickly at what is a sign of godly life. The Apostle Paul is someone that could easily boast of the amazing miracles he had performed. He could easily boast about having visions and dreams and going into the third, up to the third heaven. He actually became a Christian not through the testimony and gospel from a human being, but God himself took a hold of him and brought about his conversion. So Paul could boast about these signs and wonders that he did, but he did not. This is what Paul says we, we should boast about and what we should point to when we want to prove ourselves workmen of God. 2 Corinthians 6, 4-6 Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, and hardships, and distress, in beatings, and imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love. There were super apostles. There were false teachers coming into the churches, and they were saying, Oh, don't listen to Paul. Look at the signs and wonders we do. Look how amazing we are. Look how well we speak. Paul doesn't even know how to speak. And Paul doesn't try to point to all the amazing healings that he had done and that he had actually been to heaven in a vision. He says, look at the hardships I go through for the kingdom of God. That is proof that I am God's worker. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty three, Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder. I have been in prison more frequently. I have been flogged more severely. And I have been exposed to death again and again. So he is boasting about the hard work he has done for Christ. Um, this is also something that we learn when we read the letters to the churches in Revelation 2 and 3. That the churches that, are, that seem alive, that they're powerful, signs and wonders are happening, they're rich, they're the top of the world. God said, you, you are dead spiritually. You, you have no spiritual power whatsoever. But the churches that are poor and afflicted and they're persecuted and they're facing beatings and death every day, they're dying for Christ. They are the church that are powerful spiritually. What should we look at when we want to see a, a, a true, strong believer? We should look at how hard those per people work for the kingdom of God. And of course, that is not the only sign. We cannot say, well, look, that is absolute proof. We must always turn back to the Word of God. Good biblical teaching, 2 Timothy 2.15, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly handles the Word of, of truth. How do we show ourselves approved by God and a good worker of God? Is by the way we teach and what we teach and how we handle the word of God. So we have this modern church going around and their mission trips consist in going around healing people, prophesying over people, slaying people in the spirit and they're, they're going around doing these signs and wonders. They are no longer teaching the gospel. They are not teaching repentance. They are not reading the Bible or teaching the Bible. And this is what 1 Timothy 4.13 says, Until I come, devote yourself to public reading of Scripture, to preaching, and to teaching. This is what we are to focus on, to preach the Word of God 
And as we do this, God can bring about signs and wonders among us. Let us not make the mistake in thinking that wherever we see signs and wonders, the Spirit of God must be at work. Let us not be deceived in thinking that where there is a peaceful spirit and, and, and we feel the presence of God, that automatically that is God Himself. We must always go back to the teaching. What are these people teaching? Are they handling the Word of God correctly?